my feelings leading up to the game was one of excitement, obviously looking forward to playing for the Barbarians at Cardiff, uh, but one of a little bit of trepidation as well. We were playing against a very strong New Zealand side and of course some 18 months before the, the Lions had won the series in New Zealand and this was the first opportunity for the people of Britain to see that team play live uh, in front of them in Cardiff. So, concerned that maybe we would let them down. When I saw the ball go deep and, and Phil scampering back, um, I was totally convinced that Phil was going to kick the ball to touch. And I think that's what it needed at that particular time. Uh, the, the match had started, there was a lot of uh, frenetic play, ball was going back and forth. And, uh, the game needed to stop, so to speak, so that we could all get our, our breath back. A uh, lot of emotion, a uh, lot of uh, uh, excitement, and a lot of guys were breathing hard, even though there's only been a few minutes play gone. So I was take, ambling back, thinking, right, Phil will take it a touch, we'll take our time, we'll get our second wind, so to speak, and, and get on with the game from there. And uh, of course, all of a sudden, he did the complete opposite. When I jumped back after scoring the try, I never thought for one minute we'd be talking about that event, that moment, uh, today. Um, all I could think of, I wish it had been the last four minutes and not the first four minutes because all we wanted to do was to beat the All Blacks and uh, to have such an early score, even though there was a cacophony of, of sound in the stadium. It's, it's difficult to explain. Uh, when you're in the crowd, you can, you're, you're aware, you can hear the vibrancy of it all. But when you're on the pitch, it's as if you're shutting your mind away from it. But I could feel it in the background. And uh, as I said, um, I just thought, well, they're not going to lie down. So we knew we were in for a tough game after that. I think I'm fortunate that I, that I meet up with some of the players that played in that epic game, uh, whether they're the Barbarians or indeed on occasions the All Blacks. Um, when we meet, we enjoy each other's company. It isn't so much that we relive that moment, that moment has brought us together and it still allows us to enjoy it all these years later. Uh, mind you, the New Zealanders have a completely different look on it. They keep on asking us, why do you want to celebrate it after such a long period of time? And my honest answer to that is, well, it's a, it's a compliment to you, I said. That's what beating the All Blacks actually means. And we do it on so few occasions that this really has stood the test of time. And it really is a, a compliment that you can share with us. And uh, I can remember uh, well when I was in New Zealand a few years ago, Alistair Scown was sat next to me at a dinner and he just turned to me and he's such a, a, a wonderful, uh, nice person. And he just turned to me, well, it might be all right for you, Gareth, enjoying all those accolades and enjoying all those compliments. But think of me sometimes, he said. And of course, he was the one that missed Phil in that very vital first tackle. So I think that said it all. I probably talk about that try more often than anything else uh, and, and it still fascinates me today as it did all those years ago when people used to stop me in the street and ask me uh, in the village uh, uh, about the try. Wherever I go travelling around the world these days uh, I'm surprised that they can even remember the occasion uh, but they remember it with such uh, clarity uh, whether it's in the United States where you wouldn't say that rugby union is the most popular sport. Uh, obviously, in the rugby playing countries, you expect a little bit of interest uh, in the game. Um, but the wonderful thing and the compliment to the team and to the occasion has been the fact that people still want to hear about it today. And uh, I'd be perfectly honest, I enjoy talking about it. It has stood the test of time. Why? Because maybe it was the way that the game was played, the improvisation, the beauty of the game that was shown in that 10, 15 seconds or whatever it was, uh, was there 
and it's there for posterity of how people could actually make the game beautiful from going from defence into attack, uh, the improvisation of the passes, uh, the importance of the game and, dare I say it, actually finally beating the All Blacks at the end of the day. What could be better than that? To think that the whisky is uh, going to celebrate uh, that try all those years later, uh, I can't quite believe it. And the fact that it is here in Wales, uh, and of course is in an international market, I think it goes well with the Barbarian setup of what the whole concept of the Barbarians was all about, of the coming together, a mixture of players, and uh, a great product at the end of the day. So you've got this tradition of signing the barrel. So what I'm going to put down here now is what I actually said to Derek Quinnell, just short of taking the pass. In Welsh, Tulema de, throw it here de. <laughs> and that was to Derek Quinnell. Thankfully he heard me.